Imagine this. It's 20 below zero, you're miles from help, and your diesel refuses to start. One small mistake, and suddenly your engine is nothing but frozen scrap metal. Or worse, you're trapped with deadly fumes filling your truck before you even know you're in danger. That's not just a scary story, it's the reality for diesel owners who make even one of these 15 cold weather diesel starting mistakes. If you think that sounds dramatic, just ask a diesel mechanic. They see these disasters every winter. Diesel engines aren't like gas engines. When the temperature drops, diesel fuel gets thick, forms crystals, and turns your fuel system into a ticking time bomb if you don't know what you're doing. Most owners think revving the engine will help, or that sloshing in more anti-gel is always the answer, or that a quick blast with a torch will save the day. Wrong, wrong, and dangerously wrong. Let's break down the most dangerous mistakes that destroy diesel engines during winter, starting with number 15 and working our way to the number one killer that could literally end your life. The truth is, each mistake doesn't just cause one issue. They set off a domino effect that can take out your fuel system, electrical system, and even crack your entire engine block, leaving you with nothing but regret and a pile of metal. So here's mistake number 15, and it slips past most people because the warning signs are easy to ignore. Low compression symptoms aren't just a nuisance when it's cold, they're a red flag that gets deadly below freezing. Older diesel engines like the 7.3 liter Power Stroke are especially vulnerable. People love them for their simplicity, but as they age, low compression can make cold starts nearly impossible. The signs are there if you know what to look for. Hard starting, rough idle, and that sinking feeling when your compression test shows numbers dropping below 300 pounds per square inch. Here's why it matters. Diesel engines rely on compression to generate the heat needed for ignition. When the engine block is freezing, it acts like a giant heat sink, sucking warmth away from the air inside the cylinders. If compression is already low, you'll never get hot enough to ignite the fuel, no matter how many times you cycle the glow plugs or plug in the block heater. The result? Your engine just cranks and cranks, the fuel never burns, and you're stuck in the cold. But that's just the first domino. Mistake number 14 is all about your antifreeze mixture. And if you think topping off with water is harmless, think again. This one mistake can crack your engine block and leave your truck worthless. When you dilute your coolant with plain water, you destroy your freeze protection exactly when you need it most. Frozen coolant expands, and that's all it takes to split open the block, cylinder heads, or radiator. The cost to repair? Usually more than the truck is worth. The science is simple. Antifreeze works by lowering the freezing point of your coolant, but too much antifreeze actually reduces your system's ability to transfer heat. Too little, and you have no freeze protection. Professional diesel techs always test the coolant with a hydrometer and test strips to check both freeze protection and the health of corrosion inhibitors. The right mix, usually 50-50 to 70-30 antifreeze to water, depending on how cold it gets in your area. But get it wrong, and you risk both overheating and catastrophic freeze damage. And if you think you're out of danger, think again. Mistake number 13 is using expired or degraded fuel additives. It sounds harmless, but it's a silent killer for modern diesels. Anti-gel agents, lubricity enhancers, cetane boosters, all of them break down over time, especially if they've been sitting in your garage through summer heat and winter cold. When these additives expire, anti-gel won't prevent wax crystals from forming. Lubricity additives can actually create harmful deposits, and biocides lose their punch, letting microbial growth take over your tank. The result? Clogged fuel filters, damaged injectors, and fuel system repairs that cost thousands. The fix is simple. Always check expiration dates, rotate your stock, and dose according to the label before the fuel gets cold. Preventive treatment is everything. Using expired additives is often worse than using none at all because you get a false sense of security right before everything fails. Let's keep going. Because mistake number 12 is a classic that catches even experienced operators off guard. Blending kerosene into diesel as a cold weather fix. It sounds smart, but kerosene has much lower lubricity than diesel, and modern high-pressure injection systems need every bit of lubrication they can get. Blend too much kerosene, and you'll save your fuel from gelling, but you'll also be grinding your expensive fuel pumps and injectors to death. Some people add lubricity additives to offset this, but even then, you're rolling the dice. The only safe way is to use kerosene as a temporary fix, replace your fuel filters immediately after, and get back to proper winterized fuel as soon as possible. But the dangers keep coming. 
Mistake number 11 is mixing summer and winter diesel blends. It's easy to think any diesel will do, but these fuels are engineered for specific temperatures. When you mix them, you lose the cold protection of winter fuel and the lubricity of summer blends. The heavier fractions in summer diesel can crystallize and block your filters, while the lighter winter fractions can drop your lubricity below safe levels. If you're traveling across regions, know what's in your fuel tank and switch to local winter fuel before the cold hits. Otherwise, you're risking a breakdown just when you need your engine most. Let's get into mistake number 10, which is all about how you store your diesel for winter. Most people think a full tank is enough, but poor storage creates a chain reaction of problems. Above ground tanks swing wildly in temperature, causing condensation and water buildup inside your fuel. Plastic tanks might insulate a bit, but metal ones get hit hard by cold. Underground tanks are better, but if you're not careful, even they can let moisture in. When water mixes with diesel, it creates the perfect breeding ground for microbes, which turn into sludge that clogs filters and destroys injectors. If you let fuel sit in high heat, it breaks down and forms varnish and gum, which coat your injectors and pumps. When the temperature drops, wax crystals form and gel up your fuel. If your tank isn't sealed well, humid air gets in and makes things even worse. The pros always use silica gel vent cartridges to keep moisture out and treat their tanks with biocides and stabilizers before winter. Now, mistake number nine is deadly serious. Running diesel heaters or engines inside enclosed spaces without proper ventilation is a silent killer. Carbon monoxide is odorless and invisible. It can fill your cab or camper in minutes and knock you out before you even realize anything's wrong. Combustion heaters like Webasto or Eberspacher are great for warmth, but only if they're installed by the book. Intake air must come from outside, and exhaust lines have to be routed safely out and away from the cab. Even a tiny leak or bad seal can let carbon monoxide seep inside. Always use a carbon monoxide detector in any enclosed space with a heater. Never run your engine or heater in a closed garage or tent. The risk isn't just mechanical failure, it's your life. Mistake number eight is one almost every diesel owner is guilty of, extended idling to warm up the engine. It feels like the right thing, but it actually does more harm than good. Idling warms the engine slowly, wastes fuel, and builds up soot in your exhaust. Modern diesels need a brief idle, just enough for oil pressure to stabilize, usually 10 to 30 seconds, then gentle driving to bring everything up to temperature. Excessive idling causes fuel dilution and can clog your diesel particulate filter, especially if your trips are short. If your DPF doesn't get hot enough to regenerate, soot builds up and eventually triggers warning lights or expensive repairs. The best practice is to let preheat systems do their job, avoid long crank attempts, and drive gently until the engine is warm. Short trips and constant idling keep your engine cold and let condensation and sludge build up inside. This leads to rough running, poor fuel economy, and engine wear that adds up fast. Mistake number seven is one of the most dangerous shortcuts, bypassing or disabling factory safety systems. People do it thinking it will make cold starts easier, but it almost always backfires. Modern diesels have complex controls to protect the engine and operator. If you tamper with fuel dosing, emissions hardware, or glow plug systems, you risk catastrophic failures. Disabling safety features can cause overfueling, timing issues, or even fires. Some mods can void your warranty and break the law, especially with emission systems. Glow plug systems are smarter than ever with fast heating and staged afterglow. Disabling or bypassing them just removes critical protections. The cost of a failed shortcut is always higher than waiting for proper preheat or buying the right winter gear. Mistake number six happens when panic sets in during a cold start failure. Instead of a calm, step-by-step -step approach, people start cranking the engine over and over or try random fixes. This can drag contaminated fuel into sensitive parts and make a minor problem catastrophic. If you suspect water in your fuel, stop cranking and draw a sample into a clear glass for inspection. Diagnose whether you have a no crank or a crank but no start situation. A loud click with no engine turning usually means there's a problem in the electrical starting system. This includes the battery, its terminals, the starter solenoid, or the cables. First, check the battery's voltage when it's not under load. Then do a load test to see if it still has enough power to start the engine. Next, inspect and clean the battery terminals and ground straps. Finally, measure the voltage at the starter while trying to start the engine. 
Don't try repairs you're not equipped for. Always carry a winter field kit with spare fuel filters matched to vehicle specifications, a filter wrench, a small quantity of pre-treated diesel, and measured anti-gel doses, a robust, portable booster pack or cold-rated jumper cables, a quality multimeter, and basic hand tools for fueling and filter access. Knowing your vehicle's priming and bleeding procedures is just as important as having the parts. Mistake number five is neglecting critical winter maintenance. Skipping checks on glow plugs, relays, batteries, fuel filters, or injectors is the fastest way to get stranded. Glow plugs are your first line of defense against impossible cold starts, but they wear out and fail quietly. Test glow plug resistance before winter and replace weak plugs early. Don't trust the dash light alone. Sometimes plugs stay energized longer than indicators show. Check relays and wiring for signs of wear or melting. Batteries lose a huge chunk of their power in cold weather. Even if your battery looks fine in summer, it might fail when the temperature drops. Always load, test your battery, clean battery terminals, and make sure you have enough cold cranking amps for your engine. Dirty injectors are another hidden killer. Cold fuel and sticky deposits can cause rough starts or misfires, especially in engines with hydraulic electronic unit injectors. Skipping air filter changes chokes your engine when it needs all the airflow it can get. Cold weather demands everything and your system is working at its best. Let's get into the top four mistakes, because this is where even experienced diesel owners often slip up and pay the price. Mistake number four is overdosing your fuel with anti-gel additives or mixing products that were never meant to work together. It's easy to think that if a little is good, more must be better. But dumping in extra anti-gel or combining brands can actually cause chemical reactions that clog filters, gum up injectors, and wreck your fuel system faster than the cold ever could. Anti-gel and water control additives have limits. Use them wrong, and they'll work <sighs> against you. There are two kinds of water additives. Demulsifiers pull water together so it can be drained. Emulsifiers keep water suspended so it burns off safely. Mix them, and you get the worst of both worlds. Water that won't separate and fuel that won't flow. Double treating already winterized fuel? Bad idea. Mixing different brands? Even worse. You'll mess up the fuel's chemistry, leading to deposits, clogged filters, and damaged injectors. Emergency thawing additives like diesel 911 or seafoam are only for when your fuel is already gelled. They'll get you running in a pinch, but you'll need to change your filters right after. These are rescue tools, not substitutes for proper preventive care. The takeaway here is simple. Stick to one trusted product, follow the dosing instructions, and never assume that more is better. Mistake number three is filling up with summer diesel in winter. This is a guaranteed way to get stranded and face massive repair bills. Summer diesel has more heavy hydrocarbons for better energy and lubricity in warm weather, but those same compounds turn into wax crystals as soon as the temperature drops. The result? Blocked filters, stalled engines, and fuel systems that freeze solid. Winter diesel is blended to prevent wax formation and keep fuel flowing in the cold. If you use summer fuel in freezing weather, you'll see cloudiness in your tank first, then the dreaded gel that stops everything. It's not just about getting stuck. Modern common rail systems are especially sensitive, and a gelled system can destroy your high-pressure pump and injectors in a single night. Don't ignore cloudy or gelled fuel signs. Cloudiness means wax crystals are forming, and if you keep pushing, you'll end up with a completely blocked filter. Water in your fuel only makes things worse freezing before the wax does, and creating ice plugs you can't see. Always change your filters before winter, carry spares, and drain your water separator often. Mistake number two is revving a cold diesel engine right after starting. This one feels harmless, but it's actually one of the fastest ways to destroy your bearings, turbocharger, and internal components. Cold oil is thick and slow to circulate, so the upper parts of your engine and the turbo are starved of lubrication for those first critical seconds. If you hit the throttle before oil is flowing, you're grinding metal against metal. Turbochargers are especially vulnerable. They spin at incredible speeds, and even a few seconds without proper lubrication can cause long-term damage. Always let the engine idle briefly after starting, just enough for oil pressure to stabilize, then drive gently until everything warms up. Immediate shutdown after hard work compounds turbocharger damage through oil coking and thermal shock. After heavy operation, 
you should allow a measured cool down to maintain oil circulation while the turbo spins down preserving bearing lubrication and avoiding baking oil onto hot surfaces. Using the wrong oil viscosity only makes things worse. If your oil is too thick, it won't flow at low temperatures, and if it's too thin, it won't protect under load. Stick with synthetic multi-grade oils like 5W30 or 0W30 for severe cold and always follow your engine's recommendations. Never skip the glow plug warm-up cycle. Starting without preheating forces your engine to work harder and stresses every component during those vulnerable first moments. And now the number one mistake is the most dangerous of all, using open flames to warm engine parts. This shortcut is a disaster waiting to happen. Torches, lighters, or any open flame can ignite fuel vapors, melt hoses, and start fires that destroy your vehicle, or even cost you your life. Fire isn't just a risk to your engine, it's a threat to everything and everyone around you. Electrical heaters and block heaters are designed for safety, but only if installed correctly. Using indoor extension cords outside, failing to secure power cords, or overloading circuits can all create fire and electrocution hazards. Always use heavy-duty, outdoor-rated cords and check your block heater installation every season. Keep cords away from moving parts and make sure all connections are tight and protected from moisture. These aren't just tips. They're hard-earned lessons from diesel mechanics and experienced diesel owners who have seen firsthand what happens when these steps are ignored. Following them means you'll dodge the 15 cold start diesel engine mistakes that have wrecked engines and left far too many drivers stranded in the freezing cold. But cold starts are just the beginning. There are even more costly habits that can quietly destroy your turbo diesel, even when the weather isn't freezing. If you want to make sure you're not making those mistakes, check out my next video. If you drive a turbo diesel vehicle, stop making these mistakes. Take these warnings seriously now, and you'll save yourself thousands down the road. Stay safe, keep your diesel running strong, and click that video so winter, and every other season, never catches you off guard.